Hello everybody, Tango Sierra Zero One Chef of Team Sasquatch back again and we're going to be reviewing a device that has caused a bit of controversy. We have the 40 mic. <laughs> Okay, as we mentioned before, we've got the 40 mic here. We haven't got Sparkles, he's away doing family stuff at the moment, and we're not in the outdoor testing arena. We're at Skirmish Airsoft Billericay, and I've got a special guest. Gordon, would you like to join me, please? So, you've heard me talk about Gordon before. He has got Battlezone Airsoft in Pitsy, a brilliant shop, gets all of our gear for us, absolutely excellent, and a Tipman Tech as well. So, I'll pass this over to you. So, what are we going to be doing with this? Hello everybody, as John said, I'm Gordon from Battlezone Airsoft. Right, uh, as John said, there's been a lot of tests going on in Rally Garden this grenade and to be honest, we don't think they've been fair tests so far. They're showing the not being used correctly, an unfair manner. So what we're going to do today is we're going to run through several tests, we're going to try at different distances. We're also going to compare it to some other products uh, that basically if used that in the wrong, incorrect way, could cause uh, injury, just as what's been shown in some of the videos you've seen so far. Uh, we will be testing this today on uh, green gas and uh, 0.2 BBs. Other people have said about using different weights and stuff, but we don't feel that there's any need because a heavyweight BB in a rifle, yes, would have more range. In a Moscar, I don't personally think you're going to get much range out of it, but we may do a little bit of test later on in the week with that. Okay, so thank you very much. Excellent. We've also got one more thing because Sparkles has become a bit of an enigma, a bit of a social butterfly. We have got a new test dummy, a big fan of Sparkles, a member of the B team, and you're going to see him getting shot very, very soon. Hi everyone, as we said earlier, we're going to be testing the 40 mic today. Just running through again what we're going to be using. We're going to be using Neuroprol 2.0, it's a green gas, and we're going to be using Neuroprol Razor uh, 0.20 BBs. We're using these because really we have got other choices, but these are the most common sort of brands out there at the moment and most widely used on the current airsoft market. So we're gonna this is what we're gonna be using for that test today. We will be using the Saima standalone launcher, like a pistol style launcher, just it's a nice easy one to use. On our dummy heads today, we will be using the Neuroprol NP Specs, this is their cheaper range of uh, iPro. We don't stock sort of cheap uh, inferior iPro, so we're only testing it on what's currently safe to use in the SOF market. Um, these are okay, they are their basic range. We will be using the head strap as recommended by Neuroprol as well, and these will be used out to compare throughout our tests. Okay. Some of the other products we'll be using and testing alongside, just so comparison, we'll be using the standard 40mm uh, Moscart. We'll be also using the anti-personnel launcher from Swiss Arms. Right, here we go, we're going to do our first test now, using the Saima standalone launcher and your lovely 40 mic. For this one, we'll be doing it at their, um, what they say is their sort of optimum range, uh, which they say on the side of the grenade says 100, foot should have a 10, uh, 100 feet should have a 10 foot spread. So it's actually from the B team, standing all the way down now, which is a measured 100 foot away. And we've got the boxes either side to try and show you roughly what a 10 foot spread would be. You ready, Ash? <laughs> right, Ash, we know you are the Sparkle standing, big fan as we know. What was that one like? A little bit short, it caught my shins a little bit. Okay, so 100 foot, it was knocking down before it got to you? Yeah. Excellent. So we're going to give that one another go and I believe Gordon's going to aim a little bit higher and try and rain down some plastic there. Right, on that last test I did just point it straight how you'd actually hold a pistol. Um, and as we discovered it didn't quite have the range and actually reported the fact that it more hit him in the foot rather than anything else. So on this test I'm going to raise it up a little bit and try and drop it in to see if that increases the range at all. Here we go. This one, we are having a little bit of issues with gassing out. As you can hear, the BBs are still in now, but the uh, gas seems to have expelled itself with nothing coming out. So we'll switch over to the other one. We'll investigate that a little bit later, that one. Okay, we just want to go. Ready, Ash? Yep. Oh, fuck, I thought that one. <laughs> 
So as you can see, that test was a little bit more successful. Had to slightly hack to meet, meet the um, 100 foot. We did have to sort of lift it up a little bit, not too high, because we did actually shoot over Ashley's head, head in one of those tests. So how did that feel, Ashley? It was all right. It was, you obviously heard me swear, but it, yep. was, it was nice. It didn't feel like it hurt as a lot as you thought it would. Yep. You can feel it hit you, obviously, for a shirt. Yep. Plate carrier wouldn't know, but I think you'd still feel it. You'd definitely hear right. it. Right, okay. Yep, so quite. But it's, it's effective at 100 okay. foot. How many BBs roughly do you think you was hit by? Probably about 5, 10. Don't know, but five it was quite ten. a lot hitting okay. Right, okay, so we're going to go look down now. We're going to have a look at the cardboard boxes and the little dummy heads we've got down there just to show what the spread would be like because it's supposed to be around 10 feet. Okay? Right, this is the position that uh, Ashley was standing in. This is the test we've done at 100 feet to try and prove a 10 foot spread. Uh, Ashley said he got hit by about five or 10 BBs in this position. Uh, he said he felt it and he probably reckons he could feel it through uh, if you wore a plate carrier. But as we can see, we've got these dummy heads here with the Neuroprol specs on. Uh, the specs are all just in place. Can't see any marks in front of the dummy heads. Uh, and there's no damage. These are empty cardboard boxes, by the way. There's nothing in there. Uh, as you can see, there's no real damage to these. So it can't even penetrate a uh, cardboard at 100 feet. Like I say, that's the effective range, I'd say, and we did have to angle that up a little bit to actually get it to drop in. Right, on this test, we're going to be using the 40 mic first of all, again with the handheld launcher. We're going to be doing this one at the 30 foot minimum engagement distance recommended by Airsoft Innovations for their 40 mic. It does have it written on the side, so this is their minimum engagement distance, which is 30 feet. Ready? Yep. Three, two, one. <laughs> Come in here. Just show the good people what it is. So that is 30 foot. So that's quite a quite a decent size amount of welts. How how was it? No, no, no that would be like nine or ten out of ten. Right. <laughs> okay. Fair enough. A nine wow. or ten out of ten. So there we go. So the 30 foot range hurts. <laughs> That little test there, that was their minimum engagement distance recommended by Airsoft Innovations. Uh, Ashley did report that one was quite painful, uh, so maybe it is the, that minimum engagement distance might have to change just a little bit. As you can see from here, from the cold boxes, we do have a few. None have really gone through. Uh, they've got, got a few stuck in there. Uh, the, um, our friend Jeff Dummyhead, no relation to Operator Jeff. Um, as you can see, it's got a little mark there. It's actually gone in. It doesn't, well, no, it hasn't actually gone in, but it's actually sort of made a mark on the forehead there. All our pro seems still intact, no chips. As it come off the head, we are using the band, see? So they're all okay. Uh, it did knock the head back a little bit, as you'll see in the video. Um, so that was, uh, I would say that was like taking a Moscow at a quite close range. Um, so yeah, maybe that minimum engagement distance of 30 feet is possibly a little bit close. Right, for a comparison test on this one, we're going to be using the standard um, a 40 mil grenade launcher. I believe this one holds, uh, I think it's only between 120 and 150 BBs. I can't remember, quite remember. It's one of my old Eagle Force ones. Okay, so we'll do this one at the same minimum engagement distance as recommended by Airsoft Innovations. Okay? You ready, Ash? Yep. Here we go. So as a direct comparison, what do you think? It's a lot nicer. Yep. It's a, like, yeah, you can feel it, but it, whereas that was a burst and you just literally got it, that was kind of a spread and it doesn't hurt yeah. as badly because obviously the gas, but yeah, it's a lot better than the full mark morning. Hey. As you can see that one, all the BBs did reach Ashley there. Uh, that is only a 30 foot test, sort of optimum range for a standard 40 mil Moscart really. Nice wide spread. Um, and all we've got is really is one little tiny indentation in the box, as we sort of would expect from a standard Moscow. That is just to compare these products. So now we'll be moving on to the uh, Swiss Arms multi uh, anti-personnel long shaft. Now what you're going to remember is that Sparkles gave this anti-personnel launcher a rating of painful but bearable, not anything over the top. So let's see how it actually gets on with it. Play a little bit more about the uh, Swiss Arms, Swiss Arms Stroke Cyber Gun. Um, anti-personnel launcher. This contains uh, 300 BBs. They have a, it says they have a range of 30 meters, but really, to be honest, it's more like 15 to 20. Uh, it states 300 FPS, but I've actually, just, in a, a previous Sparkles test video, um, I did disassemble one of these and uh, weighed the BBs, and it actually turns out the BBs inside these, although there's 300, these are actually only 0.12s. You ready, yes? Yeah. There we go. <laughs> right, so as a comparison again, 
that one's the best one by far. It literally yeah. feels like someone's just dropping BBs on you. But you can still feel them, but it's literally just like someone's literally picked up and it's gone. Brilliant. Excellent. Um, that one appeared to not damage anything at all. Excuse the background noises, but the farm was doing his work. Um, yeah, that one didn't damage anything at all. So that one's quite a sort of safe to use for that sort of distance. We've done the tests uh, on the distances that have written uh, on the side of the 40 mic by Airsoft Innovations. We've done their 100 foot test. We've done the 30 foot test, which is their minimum engagement distance. Um, now what we're going to do is we're now going to do it in metres. So the first test we're going to do now is we're going to do a 25 metre test. For this one, we're only going to use the 40 mic because most Moss Guards and the Swiss Arm thing probably won't even reach 25 metres. So that was 25 metres. Now the first one wasn't that much further back. So how was, how was that in comparison? Feel it a little bit more. Hit with a couple more. But other than that, it's pretty much the same. Excellent. That time, there wasn't really, at 25 metres, it wasn't really any um, damage done to the boxes or there's polystyrene heads at all. Okay, so like any good chef, you've got to taste your food. Gordon is now going to take the 15 metre test. So would you like to explain what we're going to be using first? So the first one we're going to be using is the 40 mic at the 15 metre test, as John said. So we'll see how Gordon likes his own food now. Two, one. <coughs> oh, I put <have> left. Fuck <laughs> <laughs> you, no, no. As we saw there, Ashley can't shoot. <laughs> one. <coughs> <laughs> Apparently, neither can I. <laughs> I don't know what all the fuss is about. <laughs> Track us the two shot. Right, so neither of us could shoot him. So while Ashley's reloading those, we're going to have a go over Moscart and the anti personnel launcher. Hit. Well, those two there. Uh, on that test, that's a 15 metre test. On the standard 40 mil Moscar, I got one BB hit me in the shoulder. I could hear the spread hitting the boxes, so again, you might have hit a few multiple targets. Uh, with the Swiss arms, um, I didn't actually get hit by a BB, but I hear them hitting, both, hitting the boxes both sides. So that one spreads quite wide, wide at 15 metres. So we're now going to try this again, see if we can actually hit him this time. Three. Two, one. Right, now, that one, I'd say that one bloody stung. Now, they hit quite hard. I've got hit on my arms, both arms, I can feel it around my chest, excuse my body. Go on, guys, so you hit me in the upper chest area. I see a few marks starting to appear. Um, yeah, I'd say that's a bit of a stingy hit from like an AEG, something like that. Hard hitting, but again, like typical hit, like stung for a few seconds, calming down now, that's the end of that. I wouldn't really want that to the face because that wood did hit quite hard, but though that is what I'd call bearable, and I'd set that from a, any other pistol, gun, everything used in airsoft. Also with the 15 meter test, there is a couple of other BBs stuck into the cardboard boxes that were to my right. Um, and the dummy head to my right also got a slight indentation on the top of the head. That actually hasn't actually gone, it hasn't actually broken the polystyrene, so yeah, it was a definite hit at that range, but a little bit painful, I would say. But I did take quite a lot of hits there, but yeah, bearable, right? So now, what we're gonna do is we're now gonna test this uh, the 40 mic, the Moscar, and the Swiss Arms anti personnel launcher at 10 meters. Uh, for this one, after actually uh, receiving the 40 mic at 30 feet. Uh, we've decided just to use dummies and cardboard boxes for this one because uh, I've got to enjoy the rest of my Sunday. Okay, here we go. <laughs> you know, look at that. <laughs> right, on that test, that was the 10 metre test. The two set of cardboard boxes have got a few more BBs embedded in them. I've just checked, no BBs have actually gone through the cardboard box. These are like your standard cardboard boxes, and they're not extra thick, sort of international shipping boxes, they're just standard cardboard boxes, um, and it hasn't pierced those. Uh, and also with the dummies, uh, we've noticed that the iPro is still intact, still on the head, we are using the band, as iPro should be used. Um, we've got a couple of little marks and indentations in there. Uh, as of yet, we've got, no, yet we've got one there. So one had actually gone in the polystyrene head there. 
Uh, any more? No. Oh yeah, another one there. Says so on this one that was on the left hand side. You're right. Uh, we've got a couple of got actually got in there and sunk into the polystyrene. Oh yes, and we have got one this side as well. So 10 meters, a little bit hot. That's why we decided not to actually put nice, lovely, soft human in that one. Okay. So we're going to get a little bit short now. We're going to drop down to five meters. Oh no. Do apologise. We're going to now do a comparison for the Moscar and the Swiss Army anti-personnel launcher. Yeah, so I'll do it for this one. So this one here, we've got the standard uh, Moscar. This one's 40 mil Moscar. Okay. On that one, one of the dummies here, so that's a standard 40 mil Moscar at 10 meters. And on that one, we have noticed that on the dummy on the left, right hand side, which would be your left. It's actually got a little mark above his head, so even a standard moss cart can do that at 10 meters. So now we're going to do the Swiss arms. For that tilt test, I'm not even going to walk down here. I can quite clearly see that the spread was so wide on that. Yes, the targets did get hit, uh, but I doubt there's going to be any damage to the dummies at all. I will walk down and check in a minute, and if there is, I'll sort of tell you. Uh, but that one, they're so sort of low powered, and it's more about spread on these ones, okay? Right, everybody, this is going to be a five meter test. Now, we're going to start off with a 40 mic. We're also going to use the 40 mil Moscar as normal, and we're also going to use the Swiss Arms multi launcher. But this one, uh, we, this is for test purposes only. I wouldn't really recommend using the 40 mic at this distance. This is for information and to prove that if you use the equipment, manner, it's okay, which we have done at distance. This is to show the dangers if it's used in close quarters, which we really don't recommend the 40 mic should be used in. And also to show a reflection of the Swiss Arms, well, that's like up close, wrong way, that way, or the standard Moscar. Again, going to be quite painful, maybe at sort of five, five, five meters. Now, while Gordon's gone to retrieve his talking heads, I just want to say that I was stood behind the camera and a ricochet. Not quite sure what it came off of. I would imagine a slightly harder surface. So maybe the goggles did actually come back and get me. So even if you're firing it, you're not immune. Right, so as you see that, I aimed more at the heads there. So the cardboard boxes didn't really get much of an impact on that one. But as you see, it did knock these completely off of the uh, our, our sort of ledge, off of the cardboard boxes. Now, I'm not too sure if you can see, we've got quite a bit more damage to these on the area there. And we seem to have ripped his little ear there and down the side of his face. A few more impacts on that one. Uh, a couple more bedded in down the bottom here. This almost ripped his ear there. And that's actually a BB inside there as well. So again, that's just to prove that it really shouldn't be used at five meters. I'd like to point out these, the standard sort of basic Neuroprol uh, uh, iPro here is held up to it quite well. I mean, if you notice, they are sort of slightly uneven on their head. Now, I don't know if that was done by the blast or whether that was actually done where they've fallen off the back of the boxes. Uh, but all still intact, all still on their heads, not dislodged anyway. Okay, so we'll carry on with the tests. So now we're gonna do it with a standard 40 mil grenade launcher. Sorry, 40 mil Moscar. Yeah, on that one now, it's taken a couple of rounds to the forehead, just indentations, hasn't even pierced the polystyrene. So again, standard Moscar would be okay to use at five meters. I would say it's going to hit quite hard, so you may get a complaint, but there's no good, by, no more than getting hit by a burst full auto. But then at five meters, you wouldn't really expect to fire a full auto burst at that distance anyway. Okay. Now onto the Swiss Arms multi launcher. Okay, that was the Swiss Arms multi launcher. I would say that's quite safe to use that at five meters. It hasn't even damaged the, it hasn't even dented the uh, polystyrene heads or anything like that. So again, that one would be quite close up. Uh, uh, would it be okay up close? You might get a few complaints because of how loud the bang is. It might make a few people jump. It's scary, 300 BBs coming at you. But it is 300 BBs and they're only uh, 0.12s. So quite soft hitting really, okay? Right, now what we're gonna do is a quick one. We're gonna do another five meter test for the 40 mic. That time we did show it knocking off the dummy head, stuff like that. But this time I'm gonna try and aim it at the cardboard box from five meters to see what does. I'm gonna try and pick a box that hasn't had any damage to it so far so you can actually see what's going on, okay? That was a five meter test just to show you the amount of damage. Now this box had no damage whatsoever to it before I fired the shot. As you can see, it's taken quite a lot of the uh, hits. Quite a few have embedded themselves, okay? And there's quite a few, although the box fell over and some did come out, there is, I would probably say, 
at least 10 or 12 that have actually gone straight through the cardboard box. This is a standard sort of size cardboard box, you know, uh, probably double ply that one. Um, but as you can see, straight through it, lots of penetration. I'm not really used to 40 mic at about five meters. That's a bit dangerous, that one, okay? Right, for this test, we're actually gonna do a two meter test. Now there's no way really that any of these products we're gonna test now should be used at this distance. We're gonna do this test at two meters. We do not recommend any of these products are used at two meters, because that is just up too up close and personal. Okay, but this is more to show the effect it's going to have on the iPro and also we're going to do a test on the tip of the mask as well. Ah! Right, I'm not too sure if you can see that on there, but this has actually got quite a few uh, hits to the face now. A few couple of little tears, stuff like that. No real sort of low, sort of low damage. Uh, iPro is still intact. iPro, yep, yeah, still undamaged, not broken, cracked or anything like that. It's okay. So the eye price stood up, but I still wouldn't recommend you do that at two meters. Just discovered that there's still some BBs left in there. Um, so we're not too sure if that was an accurate test or not. What we'll do is we'll do exactly the same two meter test again with the 40 mic. <coughs> that was more of a short shot. And you can probably actually see, not too sure if it shows up on the camera, but yes, that is torn into the face. You've got loads and loads of BBs embedded in there, all on the neck, the face. I did only really aim at one, so you can see that one's intact. All in here, most of them have embedded. The eye pro, as you can see, is dislodged a little bit, but again, not too sure if that's happened. We may be able to see that in slow-mo, whether that happened with the faulty mic or whether it happened when it fell over. Okay, but again, eye pro's still intact. It's got a big chunk out of the nose there. But yeah, eye pro's still intact. No damage to the eye pro. Yep, so all good. Right, this one, we've got the, uh, this one is just a standard 40 mil, this one. As you can see, that was a standard 40, um, 40 mil Moscar at two meters. Um, again, a little bit of damage, not as much as the 40 mic. It did take both heads off because that uh, standard Moscar is more about spread, not direct shot. And again, uh, I'm not too sure, but the iPro is not undamaged, but that time we lost the iPro off one of the dummy heads. Now, we'll have a look maybe later on in maybe slow mo and see how that came off, whether that was actually the blast from the 40 mil Moscar or whether it was actually falling off. We're going to use the Swiss Arms anti personnel launcher. Okay, not much damage there. Like I say, on that with the Swiss Arms uh, anti personnel launcher, it is only using uh, 0.12 gram BB, so they're quite light, not too hard hitting. Uh, doesn't appear to be much damage, but I say the, the masks, uh, the mannequin heads are getting quite damaged now. So, but I've, I've shot that quite close to somebody before by mistake, uh, and they didn't really complain. It said more of it was more of a fright. So that would be okay, be okay to use at that distance. But again, there'd be really no need to. With this test, what we're going to do, uh, because we've noticed that the false mic has quite a blast of air that comes out, or gas that comes out with it. So what we're going to do is, with no BBs in it this time, we're going to do it just with gas. Up close, quite close, I'm going to do it probably from about four or five inches away, uh, and we'll see what that does and whether it can knock the dislodge the iPro. So as you can see that little test, what we were trying to demonstrate is how much uh, pressure is coming out of this 40 mic. And as you see there, just the gas alone from sort of four or five, maybe six inches away, that was able to knock the dummy's head straight over the side, but again, nothing to the eye post. So that may have a little bit of, um, with the close-up test, that may be what was knocking the dummy's heads off, but it may be just the BBs. But I say, that was just a quick test to see how much pressure was in there. Right, guys and girls, what we're gonna do with this one, this is just to show about using proper eye pro. So we've been using the Neuropro, uh, I think they're basically just good neural, neural pro, uh specs. So we're using the cheap ones, the basic ones, uh, but this one we're going to test the tip and mask to see how that holds up because really in close quarters or anywhere like that I mean wouldn't recommend still using the foot mic in close quarters but this is the sort of mask you really want to be wearing and this is just to show how the tip and mask will withstand a faulty mic from about two meters away. <coughs> right as you can see there tip of mask we've stood that no trouble at all so really what that shows if you're using the correct eye pro at any airsoft up close further away distances you shouldn't really get any damage to the face at all obviously the rest of your body especially the faulty mic out of one of these may be a bit painful right on this test what we're going to do because um, we've noticed one thing whilst testing this uh, we've had a few so i've seen quite a few comments people saying there's no way you can stop this from firing or something like that. once you pull the trigger it's too late what we've noticed uh, is that 
on a normal gun, yes, you'd pull the trigger, let go of the trigger, it would fire. With this, you have to hold the trigger down to expel all the gas. If you were to release the trigger halfway through, you would technically only fire half of the gas out of it, so it should be less powerful. So we're going to try and demonstrate this now. Okay, so I'll, I'll pull the trigger and quickly release it. Okay? So as you can see there, there was still some air left in it. So there may be a way, I mean, we haven't worked out how to chrono the faulty mic yet, but I can see that maybe you're not releasing all the gas. So there could be a way of, if you quickly release the trigger, say someone stepped out in front of you, you may be able to. I'm not saying you can, but it may be, uh, not release all the pressure of the gas. Because as you see, afterwards, there was still quite a lot of gas to come out on the second pull. Right, for this test, this is more for curiosity, really. What we're going to do, we're going to use the Enola Gay uh, EG67 ball grenade. Now, I'm going to drop this just in front of the dummy heads, just as a comparison, just really, and, and curiosity, just to see what that damage that will do up close to these dummy heads. Again, I doubt you'd ever get a grenade this close to your head, but you never know, being a sniper, you might get one laying close next to you, but it's more for just curiosity, okay? I can't really tell what damage has been done there. Uh, that would maybe one for a slow-mo video a bit later on. Uh, but as you can see, yeah, I mean, eye pro still on. Lots of holes here, but they could have already been there. I'm not too sure, because the dummy heads are a little bit of a state now. But yeah, eye pro held up, no problem at all. Okay. Right, so we've done all our testing. Now we're gonna have a little talk about uh, our feelings towards these different airsoft products. So, Gordon, what do you think? What's, uh, what's your opinion? Okay, well, as you see, we've been doing the 40 mic today. It's really to show what this is like and the true reflection of the product. Um, now, it's a great product. Uh, these will be available in store from the uh, end of June, hopefully when the shipment arrives. Uh, now, um, my personal opinion on this, it's a great product and it will have its uses within the airsoft. Uh, but I believe that basically this is a product that shouldn't be used in close quarters. It is quite painful. And after the test we've done today, I think that you may be sighted and we'd be looking at setting a minimum engagement distance of maybe 15 metres plus, because that was quite painful at 15 metres. Um, but yeah, I reckon probably around about 20 metres. It's going to affect its range up to 100 foot uh, if angled correctly. At 25 metres, it will hit that target, obviously a little bit less than 100 feet, so it will definitely hit a target at that. But 15 metres, I think it hits hard, but it's no more than being hit by an AEG from, say, about two, three metres away. So, yeah, overall, uh, my final opinion is good products, has its usage, but we recommend it doesn't get used in a standard airsoft environment, something like a standard skirmish day. There's too many young kids, uh, young players coming into the scene now, and one of these gets on this in the face, or even to the upper body could quite hurt, and also not forgetting uh, some of our lovely female airsofters that are now joining the community. Uh, this up close could hurt and cause a little bit of damage to your face, body parts, stuff like that. So, 15 metres plus, perfect product. Uh, I don't think the minimum engagement distance that airsoft innovations have set, 30 feet, I think that's a little bit too close, that one. So you heard from Gordon there as a retailer and as a player. Uh, as a player myself, I think that the this product is brilliant for a bit of in-game enhancement. If you was to give it to a set of marshals or a player that's been designated, you could call it an airdrop. Um, I don't think you should really get very close with it. it as we've seen, it does do um, a bit of damage close up. But once you get the right distance, um, I think it's a, it's a brilliant product, absolutely brilliant. And what's really nice is that there are companies out there that are putting the time and effort in to develop these products, to make different things, to test them, because it's not gonna be a cheap process. Designing and building one of these things, prototyping, getting patents, all that kind of stuff is an expensive business. And it's really nice to see that companies are putting the effort in to do that kind of thing. Uh, before we go through what we the products we've been using today, uh, first I'd like to thank Jim from Skirmish Billericay for letting us use his site and run our test today. Uh, great little site, runs games every Sunday. They do do the occasional Saturday game and run regular competitions. Uh, on site they've got a lovely stocked uh, airsoft shop by Quartermaster and they've also got Sarah from SMS on site every Saturday and Sunday selling all your sort of accessories, uh, surplus stuff, things like that, okay? Right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna move on to what we've been using today. 
So as you've seen, we was using the standard 2.0 green gas from Europrol and the obviously the, the standard 2 gram, sorry, 0 0.2 gram BBs from Europrol 2. Standard products used quite broad, wide, widely. People have talked about using stronger gases in the 40 mic. I wouldn't recommend using stronger gas. Also, Airsoft Innovations recommend you don't use stronger gases or CO2 or HPA. So stick to your standard green gas, should be okay. You start using stronger gases, HPA, CO2, you're only trying to hurt somebody. And really, if, you're trying, if you go to an Airsoft event trying to hurt somebody, please do us all a favor, put your gear away and go home. Standard BBs, six mil, uh, two, uh, three, uh, 0.2 grams, they're okay. People said about using heavy weights in this grenade. I don't know anyone that uses heavy weights in a Moscar, uh, standard 40 mil Moscar. There is no need for it. Uh, I say, if you're only going to use heavy weights in weapons like that or devices like that, your only intention is to hurt somebody. And again, I believe the same process. If you turn up at an airsoft event and you're trying to hurt somebody, you don't belong in the sport and it would be time for you to go home. And so that's the gas and the ammunition that we've been using today. And now we'll move on to the iPro. Like I say, today we've been using the standard Neuroprol NP specs. Uh, me, myself, uh, we sell other, the other Neuroprol glasses, like the Battle Pros, things like that. We sell a lot more of the Battle Pros because they're slightly better glasses, uh, in my opinion. But like I say, we use their cheap ones today in, their, uh, in our test. CE rated. Again, I don't know why the iPro have been using other tests, but we recommend using a proper brand. None of this cheap. Well, I don't say the word in class, it's Chinese, but we all know what we mean by that in the airsoft world. We mean the cheap Chinese clone stuff that you can pick up on eBay, other sort of dodgy sites, things like that. We recommend buying your iPro from a proper shop, proper airsoft supplier, and you'd probably better be buying in your own country if you're around the world, international or in the UK. At least you know then it's past your country's safety uh, specifications and stuff like that. Okay, so we recommend using these or above. Also, just to show, we did do a lot of testing when we was using, Ashley was using it and I was using it. We did use the Tipman full face mask. Uh, we've got these in store at the moment. There's a new mask out by Tipman. These are fantastic masks. They don't fog up. Great if you wear glasses, you can fit them over your glasses. And as you see today, I shot this from two meters away with a full 40 mic. And yes, it's called down. It's called scratch, uh, little indentations to the lenses and everything like that. But that's what you'd expect by here being in the face. But the face, it's, uh, the mask itself, we've stood it all and stood up so perfect place face protection that one so like i say the uh, launchers and stuff we've been using today like i say as you know this test was mainly to show the 40 mic but we've done a few comparisons as well just to show what other products were like 40 mil moscar it's one of my own personal ones it's made by eagle force i do believe it's got a capacity of 120 to 150 i can't quite remember exactly be a yeah, great product and you've seen that in the test today uh, we was also using the uh, Swiss Arms Stroke Cybergun uh, Anti-Personnel Launcher. Again, 300, 300 BBs. They say 30 meters, but yeah, it was about 15, 20. But you see it was quite effective here and there. Great little product, great for scaring people, taking out the uh, people that are into, uh, dug into a position. And then our final little test you see today was the Enola Gay EG67. That was just to try and show, uh, show really that if airsoft products are used incorrectly, then there's always a risk of damage um, from anything really. I say if anything in airsoft is used incorrectly, you'll always get some sort of damage. I'd like to say thank you for everybody that's helped out of our video today. Uh, I'm Gordon from Battlezone Airsoft. We'd like to thank Jim from uh, Skirmish Airsoft in Billericay. Uh, we also had Ashley from our B team, one of our team members. He was doing a lot of testing today. Great test. I mean, sorry if you got a little bit injured, but uh, that's the name of the game. And also, I'd like to say thank you to John from uh, Team Sasquatch for doing our video in today. Uh, great guys. If you ever see any of our teams out on the field, the B team is the Battlezone Airsoft's own shop team, and we play alongside the uh, Team Sasquatch quite a lot. And we have an event next week coming up at AWA in Hertfordshire. It's not actually an event, it's a game where basically both teams are going to come along. We're trying to get as many people as you can. So again, if you ever see us out on the field, come over and say hi. We're a friendly bunch of guys. If you need any advice or chat, come and see us. And also just a reminder, uh, Battlezone Airsoft is a Tipman retailer for the Essex area. We've got all their latest products in stock. We've also now started stocking ASG. Uh, we're stocking Ola Gay. So we have lots of products in stock. Uh, thank you very much for watching our video today. Hope it's nice and informative for you. We've tried to do a fair and uh, unbiased test. So that's why we tested it at different distances and we tested different products. 
hope that gives you a better view of how the 40 mic is going to be perceived in the airsoft market final one for me uh, I do apologise, I'm not very good on camera or anything like that. Uh, I hate the sound of my voice, I, hate <laughs> I love the way I look because I look fantastic with a new belly, but unfortunately I don't like the sound of my voice, don't really like appearing on camera, but I did feel that um, the tests you were seeing out there were un un unfair, and basically it needed a fair test. I, said, I think we believe that, so we've shown that today, different ranges, different sort of distances, and thank you very much okay so a very different sparkles test today new location new people involved no sparkles himself but with Gordon having a lot of these products and I'm sure he'll bring one out I'm sure we will get a bit of video of sparkles being shot so don't worry about that I know some of you might be disappointed but from myself thank you very much for watching um, shortly before this video was uploaded there was a gameplay video uh, that I will link in the end of the video that was from our recent game at airsoft plantation thank you very much for watching we'll see you on the next one